So we need to come up with the equation. What, which of those four choices do you think is going to be easiest to determine a phase shift? What is this graph? What would you say? Which one would you want to use if you could have any choice of the sine, cosine, negative sine, or negative cosine? Cosine, sine, negative. Well, the good news is you're all correct because you could pick the sine if you started, say, right here. That would work for sine. That would work for cosine. That would work for negative sine. Um, personally, I would probably pick a negative cos graph because negative cos, there is no phase shift to look for. If I use the negative cosine, there it is. I don't actually need to figure out how far over it's been moved. It starts right where it was supposed to. So again, you're all correct with your equation, but if we try to strategize about the phase shift, I think you'll find that this is the easier equation to come up with. Um, a negative cos graph. Maybe I'll make my negative look a little better. Negative 42 cosine. 2 pi over 50. Um, there is no phase shift, so it's just x. And we said the center line is 43. OK, so if you wanted to estimate our height, uh, we now have a model for that graph. So we, all we have to do is substitute in 65 seconds, and it will tell us whereabouts we'd be located. So into my TI-83. I can put in 65 um, plus 43. And I think if I remember, is it around 55 meters or so? 56 meters? Yeah, I think it's 55.98 or 0.98. OK, so the next part um, is going to require our TI-83 calculator. This is one of the parts I was telling you about which was necessary. So um, uh, first what we're going to do is we're going to have to put this into the TI-83. So unfortunately there's no good way that I can put it up for you here, but I'll show you the set of strokes that you're going to put onto the keys. It's going to be a second function, and then it's the trace button, which gets you to the, the uh, screen called calc. Then in there, we're going to want to use an intercept. So you don't need to go there just yet. I'll show you how this method works. First of all, we need to have um, y1 on the graphing calculator. Um, y1 has to be the model here. So in your TI-83, it needs to be negative 42 cosine um, 2 pi over 50 times x. plus 43. And on the second line, we're going to take a look at the height 25, was it 25 meters? So that's what we should have entered into our TI-83. Um, I will emulate it for you here on the computer while you're doing it, but um, this is roughly what it should be like. Negative 42 cosine 2 pi over 50. times x plus 43. And we need a good window. So for you, if you hit the window button, which is at the top of your screen, you're going to want to go from 0 to 50, because that's one period of the graph. So from 0 to 50 seconds, that'll show me one cycle around the roller coaster, or the Ferris wheel. Okay, You definitely don't want to be on a roller coaster that's negative 6 or a Ferris wheel, because when you hit zero, the ride's over. Negative six is a bad thing. So in this instance, the minimum is one, as long as I can see from minimum to maximum. So maybe I'll go from zero to the maximum height is 85. So zero to 90 should cover it. So there's one cycle of the roller coaster. And that's what your TI-83 screen should look like once you've entered it in. Of course, as I said, I want to see where does it hit 25. So there's 25 meters drawn along the graph alongside this uh, equation. And as you can see, 
right here, there's one instance when you hit 25 meters. There's another time over here. Okay, so I'll walk you through the steps now of how the calculator will tell you what time that was. What you're going to do is follow the sequence we talked about earlier. You're going to go second function, trace, intersect, and then what you're going to get is you're going to have a screen that looks like this one again, and the TI-83 is going to say first graph. Okay, so when you're there, let me just see by show of hands how many people have this picture on their uh, calculator screen. Okay, I'll give you a minute to catch up then if that's not the case. Okay, so you should have the, uh, everything on your picture now. Your picture should look like this. Once you have that picture again, here's what you need to do. You need to go second function, then trace, then select the intersect. Now what it will do is then it will jump straight to your graphics screen. So if you're in the right spot, right now there should be a picture with a question which is asking you, first curve question mark. So what it says on my screen, it wants to know what's a guess if I was on the first curve. So what I'm going to do is if this was my rough sketch of what your TI-83 looks like, okay, I'm going to move, there's a little box, a little cursor, I'm going to move it until I get right near the actual value. So you can move it left and right. In my case, I'm moving it to the left until I end up touching right where the intersection is. And then I'm going to press the Enter key. Okay. So once I press Enter, it now says second curve. Same process. Move the cursor until it is right on the spot that you want, which is most likely already there. The final thing it's going to say is guess for me. Okay. Where it is, as long as it's close to that intersection, is a good enough guess, so you can hit enter a third time. What will happen then is it will do its own calculations and tell you that um, 8.975, so we'll call it 8.98 seconds into the ride, you hit 25 meters. Okay, so again, um, if I was to show you with this software here, it's similar, finding the intersection, you did your first, second curve, and then my guess, all guess is 9. So it tells me that it's 8.974 at 25. Okay. So if I wanted to know the first time that I hit 25 meters, it's going to be 8.98 seconds. Okay, so let's uh, move on. Okay, a certain mass is... Uh, rests at a half a meter above the table. So that's where we're at right here. This is a half a meter. And it says um, it's pulled down by 0 0.4 meters. So let's take a look. at That would be brought down something like this. And then it says when it's released, it rises to a maximum height of 0 0.9 meters. So that means it's going to go up to... 0 0.9 meters. And it says it takes two seconds for the mass to return um, to the low position. So that means to go from a low position back to a low position, it's telling us is 1.2 seconds. So tell me about this graph. What do you already know about this graph? It might look obvious. That's okay. Just say it. What things do you know about it already? That would be important for us to come up with an equation. Tell me something about it, Dylan. Sure. What's the period? Um, I think you mean the period is 1.2. So the number that will appear in the equation is 2 pi over 2. Or 1.2. Yeah. Okay, what else can we figure out from the information? Amplitude. How did you get amplitude? Sorry? Oh, okay, so it sounds like we need to figure out what was the maximum here. 0 0.9? What was the minimum? What will the smallest spot be? 0 0.1, right? It goes from 0.5 down to 0.4, so there's a 0 0.1 left. Okay. So
So then, yes, now that we know the minimum and maximum, we can talk about the amplitude and center. So amplitude is going to be 0 0.4. The center line is halfway, so it'll be 0 0.5. And it says at time equal to zero, it's pulled down and released. So if it's pulled down and released, this is what it's going to do. So what would that graph approximately look like? It's going to end up looking a lot like a negative cosine graph. right? So if it's a negative cos, that would be a good one to choose. We now have the four pieces. Um, if it's negative cos, this is time equals zero, there is no shift. It starts right at the bottom, that's where the negative cosine already starts. So here I could write my equation, negative 0 0.4 cosine 2 pi over 1.2, and I have no phase shift, and a center line at 0.5.